am recording as of now. So please know that this is being recorded. All right, Kenji feeds his cat a mixture of wet and dry food at every meal. He mixes five spoonfuls of dry food and 10 spoonfuls of wet food for Tiger. So let's go ahead and deal with Tiger. He has a five to 10 ratio here. For every uh, five scoops he gets of dry food, he gets 10 scoops of wet food. And we know that if we did what I call the factors of a number, the factors of five are five, and that's it. The factors of 10 are two. Five, ten. So what's the least common factor here? The least common factor is five. Or actually the greatest common factor. The greatest common factor is five. So if we divide five by five, we get one. If we divide 10 by five, we get two. How did I get these numbers right here? I know that two times five equals 10, and 10 times one equals 10. So all numbers will have one and the number that equals that number. One times five equals five. Nothing else times anything else equals five. So five really only has one and five. We don't use one because if we divide it five by one, it'd be five. If we divide it one by 10 by one, it would be 10. So we try to find the greatest number that they have in common, and in this case, it would have been five, okay? Hopefully everybody understands that. So Tiger gets, his ratio is one half at the end of the day. So let's look at the other animal. We have his smaller cat. He gets three spoonfuls of dry food and five spoonfuls of wet food. All right, let's look at the factors of three. What times three equals three? Well, I know one times three equals three and that's it. What times five equals five? One times five equals five, and that's it. Do I have any common numbers? Yes, I have one, but I know that if I divide these by one, I will get the same number, so this answer is three-fifths. So are these the same ratios, yes or no? The answer is? No. No, no they are not the same ratio. All right, let's do one more before we move on to science and looking at ratios via science. This is the last one. Go ahead and take time to read it and then share your answers with me. All right, be sure to share your answers via chat. I'm looking for those now. Awesome, looks like answers are coming in and everybody is saying no. Let's see if we are correct. So we have three out of eight. I know that one times three is three and that's it. 
I know that one times eight, and I'm gonna separate this because I know it might be a little bit more, is eight. And then two times four is eight. And I don't think anything else equals eight. That's it. So there are no common numbers besides one. So this stays the same as three eighths. So now I'm gonna do two fifths. I know that one times two equals two and nothing else. And then one times five equals five and nothing else. One is the only common number so that they stay the same. And because they stay the same, they are not the same ratio. So no would be the correct answer. All right, now, how does this relate to science? Well, one of the biggest things that we are having a hard time doing on that science test is this Punnett square. So we're gonna start from a very simple level, but we're gonna work our way up to doing ratios with the Punnett square. Now, I know I have some Punnett square experts on the line, so hopefully you'll be able to help us understand this, but this is the Punnett square here, okay? And this is how it looks in science. We have a group of rats. Some individuals have normal sized bodies and others have dwarf bodies. In this group, the gene for the body size traits has two alleles. The allele for the dwarf body, B, is recessive. B is recessive. If anything is recessive, that means that it is opposite of being dominant. So capital B, a normal sized body, will be more dominant. That means if I have anything with a capital B attached to it, it's gonna have a normal sized body. Okay, the only way I'm gonna have a dwarf body is if I have two lowercase b's. Even if it's what they call heterozygous, where it's two letters, we have an uppercase and a lowercase. Because we have an uppercase b, it's still gonna be dominant and this animal will have a normal size body. All right, how do we figure out what the b's will be? We cross multiply here. So we have lowercase b, uppercase b, which gives us the heterozygous b, b. Here we have lowercase b, lowercase b, which gives us the homozygous two lowercase b's. If we multiply this b and this b, what do we get? Uppercase b, if I can write it in there, lowercase b. And then if we multiply these two b's together, we get two lowercase homozygous bees, all right? With that being said, before we go any further, how many animals are going to have normal sized bodies? You can put that answer in the chat box. Out of four, this is a ratio, out of four, how many will have normal sized bodies? Okay, Ms. Gloria says two out of four will have normal sized bodies because we have two here with the capital Bs. If we were to reduce that, that would be one half, okay? Which also means that two with the recessive gene will have dwarf sized bodies. All right, let's practice that again. All right, so it's asking a different question with the same type of data here from our dwarf or normal sized body rats. It says, the Punnett square shows a cross between two rats. Consider the phenotypes of the offspring shown. Select a box that represents an offspring with the dwarf body, okay? So I'm going to label these as one, two, three, and four. Using the chat box, let me know which animal has the dwarf body. Is it one, two, three, or four? And remember, the dwarf body is going to be the recessive B. All right, so Miss Tammy is saying four. Anybody else? Three and four, says Miss Loria. 
and that is correct. It's going to be three and four. So for the sake of choosing one, Brianna is correct. We're gonna say four, and that is correct, okay? Now it has one for guppies, and this one, I'm gonna have you tell me the answers. You can uh, put it in the chat box. What would this be, with the gray body being dominant and a golden body being recessive? When we put these two Bs together, what is that? All right, awesome. Capital B, capital B. Homozygous. What about these two? What is the second one going to be? And you always put the capital letter first. So that's right, capital B, lowercase b. How many fish are going to be gray? Over how many fish are going to be golden? What's the ratio? Okay, Ms. Lori is saying three over one because we have this one being gray because it has a dominant B. This one's going to be gray with this dominant B. And this one has a dominant B. This is the only one that is going to be golden. So you are correct. The ratio is three over one. All right, let's go and look at ratios with Punnett square. I think we understand how the Punnett square works now. Is there anybody that needs assistance with the Punnett square before we move on to ratios? Hopefully everybody is getting it. I'm gonna pause for any mm. questions. Do you have a question, Ms. Gwen? Uh, I found the, uh, um, I don't know what's going on with my telephone. <laughs> Because I, I was trying to get on my lab, but it ain't working, so I had to get back on my phone. Um, okay. So I, was, I was trying to get back on my lab, but it's not working right now, so I had to get on the phone and do okay. it. And, um, so do you have any questions so far about what we're doing? No. Okay. I'm, I'm, I'm good. Yeah. All right. I'm going to mute you for the sake of everybody being able to hear. Okay. Don't okay, let me do it. Let me see what's going on here. Let's have the magic fruit and the genes of the fruit. Um, whoops. I don't know why I couldn't uh, meet her. I'm going to let her back in. Hopefully, she can see. She's going to be like, You kicked me out. Uh, when are you back in? All right, hopefully people have had a chance to uh, read this while I am troubleshooting with Miss Gwen. All right, in a group of tomato plants, some individuals have smooth fruit and others have fuzzy fruit. In this group, the gene for fruit texture traits has two alleles. The allele for smooth fruit, F, is dominant over the allele for fuzzy fruit, F. The punnet shows, so it already shows the cross between both tomato plants. How many plants represent smooth fruit? That's the dominant F. How many do we have? Two. Two. It's two. And how many are going to be fuzzy? Three. Whoa. Four. Three. Two. Wait a minute. We have Ms. Loria saying it's going to be two out of two. So smooth fruit is capital F. So anything with a capital F is going to be smooth. So it's only two with capital F. Fuzzy fruit is going to have two lowercase f. So it's two and two. All right. Let's continue. Now it's asking us what is the ratio? What is the ratio of smooth fruit? To fuzzy fruit. Two by two. Two, two, two. Okay. Because we're saying two out of two, you can say two out of two, or two to two. All right. That's the correct answer. 
Let's do another one. Now it's giving us the vocabulary that we need, okay? It's having things like homozygous, homos, uh, homozygous, heterozygous. This is how it's probably going to look on the actual test as well. All right, so we're talking about carp. Carp are large freshwater fish that are often raised for food. Before carp is cooked, its scales are usually removed. Normally, carp are covered in small scales arranged in straight rows. But carp with mirror scales have large scales arranged in scattered patches. Because mirror scales do not cover the fish's entire body, carp with mirror scales are easier to prepare for cooking. Making me hungry here. In a group of common carp, some individuals have normal scales and other have mirror scales. In this group, the gene for the scale trait type trait has two alleles. The allele for normal scales, normal scales, is A, dominant over mirror scales, lowercase a, recessive. Two carp, carps mated and had little carp babies. Will they have normal scales or mirror scales? And how many will have each, all right? So it's asking, how many boxes represent offspring that are homozygous recessive? Homozygous recessive. That means the same letter of the recessive gene. That would be two lowercase a's. That is homozygous recessive. How many of those do we have? Looking at the chat box for answers. Zero from Gloria Allen. All right. How many boxes represent heterozygous? Norm Notice that they don't say dominant or recessive because heterozygous is going to be the two letters mixed together, which is automatically dominant. This is heterozygous, two different types of letters together. How many heterozygous do we have? Brianna Johnson. Says four, awesome. All right. How many homozygous dominant, homozygous dominant do we have? How many homozygous dominant? That's going to be capital A, capital A. This is homozygous dominant. Let's see if I can get my pen going. Okay, Cortland, how many do we have? Seems like everybody is getting the answer. The answer is zero. There are none, okay, awesome. Okay, now we have a ratio question. We have a ratio question. What is the expected ratio of homozygous recessive to heterozygous offspring? We have to keep it in that order when we're answering. We have to put the homozygous recessive number first and the heterozygous next. Um, Mr. Cortland, I am not going to accept any of these excuses. We are never bad at anything. We're always learning, okay? So instead of saying I'm bad at something, just say I'm growing and expanding my knowledge at ratio. All right. So what is it going to be? I see people saying four out of four. That means we have four homozygous recessive it's and four heterozygous. It's so only it's four be, boxes. It's going to be four over zero. Four over zero. Okay, let's see. Homozygous recessive is A, A. Homo means the same. Recessive means lowercase. So let's think about that. How many homozygous recessives do we have? 
No, no, two, three, four. Homozygous. How many lowercase a a's together? It's gonna look like one, two, three, a. four. Do we agree? Yes. We have. This four. says lowercase a, lowercase a. No. 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 So, oh, okay. So what this means is one with normal skills had babies with one yeah. without normal skills, mm -hmm. and they all had babies with what kind of skills? Normal, normal skills. So normal are these skills. homozygous or heterozygous? Uh, uh, heterozygous. Heterozygous. Remember, heterozygous. hetero means different. So hetero means it's different, different. types oh, of litter. Okay. So how many homozygous recessives do we have in this box? None. Zero. Zero. Two, three. So how three, many heterozygous do we have what? in the box? Four. 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 Portland says yeah. four. So this is our answer. Zero to four. Okay. Oh, um, okay. So zero to four. Um, zero to four. You gotta be very careful about this. Um, Let's go through another one. It's gonna take us all the way through again. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Mute everybody again. Miss Gwen, can you mute your mic real quick? I don't know why it's not doing it for me. Oh, okay. Okay, there we go. And then once we give the answers, we can unmute. All right. Go ahead and read this one to yourself. I just want to point out real quick before you read this, and please write this down in your journal because this is important. Homozygous recessive means two lowercase letters. This is homozygous recessive. Okay, that's going to be F, F. Homozygous dominant means two of the same capital letters. So that's going to be capital F, capital F, and anything that's heterozygous is going to be two different types of letters. So an uppercase letter and a lowercase letter. Keep that in mind. All right, so go ahead and give me the... You can use the chat pop to answer. Thank you. All right, I see answers are coming in. I'm going to give a few more minutes to go ahead and get those to me. I'm in a few more seconds. All right, let's see what everybody is saying. 
For number one, how many boxes represent offsprings that are homozygous recessive? What is your answer for number one? Zero. 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 Do we all understand why this is zero? zero. Yeah. If there is anybody that is out there that's saying zero, how did y'all get zero? Speak now. Yeah, it was zero. I'm saying no small l. Zero. C. I mean, zero is f. It's a small l. Right. Zero. It's both. Okay. Corlin just said it. They're all dominant. They're all homozygous dominant. So how many homozygous dominant do we have? Four. It's four. Four. And how many heterozygous do we have? Zero. 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 All right. Let's see if we're right. We're right. Yeah. Okay. It says, and write this in the chat box. Don't answer out loud. What is the expected ratio of homozygous recessive to homozygous dominant? Go ahead and put your ratio in the chat pod. Uh, you have 30 seconds. Recessive to dominant, Cortland. Recessive to dominant. Make sure you keep them in order. Okay, Miss Tammy. Recessive to dominant. Good job. Good job. They're coming in. All right. So, how many recessive do we have? How many lowercase? Zero. And how many dominant ones do we have? Homozygous dominant. Four. 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 So our ratio is zero to four. I have lost on that one. Okay, so let's go back. Remember, homozygous recessive, that's gonna be that lowercase, that lowercase letter. Remember, when we think about homo, that means the same. Homo sapiens, same kind of animal, okay? And when it's hetero, it's different. When it's homozygous dominant, that's going to be the same capital letter. Okay. So, Ms. Lori, it said, how many homozygous recessives? How many lowercase f's do we have here? I don't see any. Okay, that's why we have zero. And then how many homozygous dominant do we have? How many capital Fs? Oh, a while ago in my eyes, I kept seeing small and large, so sorry about it. I got bad eyes. Oh, okay, okay. Uh, that makes a lot of sense. So it has all dominant. All right. All right, what we're gonna do is kind of move over because I think we have this. So this is gonna be your pop quiz here to come up with this ratio for heterozygous over homozygous recessive. What is the ratio of heterozygous fleece to homozygous fleece? Okay, and we're looking at woolly fleece being the recessive and hairy fleece being the dominant. How many heterozygous to homozygous recessive? Y'all have got to pay close attention to what it's asking. What is heterozygous? Oh, look at that. One, two, one. Heterozygous, two F. Two that are different. So what letters would that be? Two, two, two. What is homozygous recessive? Okay, so um, it's gonna be one half. The capital and the low, the low F and the capital. Lowercase and F. The homozygous lowercase. recessive is lowercase two. F. Mm -hmm. How many of those do we have? Y'all keep saying two. 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 And then. Sorry. No. You got. Zero. It's zero. zero. It's zero. How is it going to be zero? Because we don't have any in this box that have two lowercase f's next to each other. We have a capital F. Oh, yeah. Lowercase right. F. Right. Okay. Right. Yeah. So we got to be very oh, careful. Yeah. Uh, okay, okay. So how many heterozygous do we have? One. One. Just this What's one? It? Two. No, no, no. It's two. two. It's two. We have two. And how many homozygous recessives do we have? 
Zero. 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 So the ratio is what? Two. Two. Two over zero. Two to zero. Two to nine. Two to zero. It's going to be two over zero. Oh, okay. I feel like we need to do this I missed again. up this time. I feel sure like we got to go through it one more time. What do y'all think? Here's another one. Yeah. That give us the yeah. same type. Yeah. Read through it first. Make sure. And they didn't use hetero or they did not use hetero or homo this time. They say how many do not have coat green and how many have coat green. Okay. okay. You got to know what equals the coat being gray. We got one, two. Uh, one of do not hear it. it is. Awesome. Okay. We're going to continue. We're going to do two over two. going to give everybody one minute to work on this. I need you to be sure in your answers because on that GED test, you don't get to get a Oh, well, that's right. It's backwards. You only answer one time. So take this time to make sure that you have it absolutely correct. Place your answers in the chat pod once you're done. All right, everybody has had a chance to go over it. Let me get the types of genes we have here. So we have two horses, all right? One horse has the dominant gene for having a gray coat, and one horse has a recessive gene to not have a gray coat. So they end up having four children out of their children how many got gray coats and how many got no gray coats but we have to answer how many do not have gray coats and how many have gray coats so those who are saying that two do not have gray coats right here and two have gray coats are correct very good it's two to two all right, here's another one, last one before we move on. We got about 10 minutes. All right, and this time it's using that vocabulary, homozygous recessive and homozygous dominant. One over two. I mean, one. Let's see.
All right, I'm seeing some good answers. How many homozygous recessives? Only one. How many homozygous dominant? Only one. And now we have a one-to-one -one ratio. All right, so I'm gonna stop here. You will have this assigned to you from IXL, but I'm gonna try to get it at this point because I feel like you know it. But I'm also going to assign this for Khan Academy. So we're gonna stop and uh, take a look at what it looks like on Khan Academy. Um, I always say IXL is level one, Khan Academy is level two, all right? So this is level two of what we have been doing. And there are some who are ready for level two, there are some who are not. If you feel like you're not ready for level two, it's okay, you can stick to level one, but I wanna show you what level two will look like for you. So Khan Academy is giving it to us in words, but it did not draw the Punnett square for, uh, for us. We would have to draw it ourselves. So it says in watermelon, solid green rind color, G is dominant to stripes, lowercase g. A farmer crosses two watermelon plants that are heterozygous for rind color. Now that's why we had to go through IXL so that we could understand what heterozygous is. So we know that heterozygous is two of the same, two of two of the same letter in different forms. So capital G and lowercase G. We need to cross this with another animal or another watermelon that was capital G and lowercase G. So the first thing you're gonna do, and I hope everybody is writing with me, is draw your box, a box of four. You're gonna put your capital G and lowercase g here because we know that both of them are heterozygous. Thank the Lord, they made it easy. Capital G and lowercase g here. And now we're gonna to get to see what each of our watermelons are going to look like. All right, so right here we have, and I'm gonna put a multiplication because I like to feel like I'm multiplying. We have G times G, which gives us homozygous dominant G. They're gonna have a solid green color, all right? Then we have G times lowercase g, which is gonna give us another heterozygous. That's gonna also be a solid green color. Uppercase G times lowercase g will give us a heterozygous, lowercase. And then lowercase g times lowercase g is gonna give us two homozygous recessive genes. So this is the only one that's going to be stripes. And I make note because I need to know what I'm looking at in science. This one's going to have stripes and the rest are going to be green. So what are the odds that the offspring will have solid green rod rinds? So now we're looking at probability in science, which is also math, okay? So what are the odds that we're gonna get solid green? We have one solid green here, two solid greens here, three solid greens, three out of how many different choices, okay? It didn't ask how many solid greens to non-solid greens. It says, what are the odds of having solid greens, okay? So it's three out of how many choices? We had one, two, three, four different choices. Three out of four is going to be the answer. Does that make sense? And we're gonna do yes. this again. Yes. Awesome. Let's do another one on Khan Academy. First, let's make sure I'm correct because I might be wrong. You know, I've been wrong before. So let's see. Woohoo, I got it right. All right. That's the correct answer. All right, let's look at this one and this one will be for you. The same way I just worked mine out, you will need to draw your box and work yours out. Many farmers prefer cattle without horns because it's safer in their, it's safer for their herds. The allele for no horns is capital N, which is dominant, to the allele for the presence of horns, which is lowercase n recessive. A farmer mates a male with horns to a heterozygous female without horns. So we have a male with horns and a heterozygous female without horns. I'm going to assume that our male with horns, because they did not say heterozygous, is going to be a homozygous dominant 
which is what num which letters? What does that look like? N. Two N. capital N. N. Okay. And our heterozygous is going to look like what? A small N. With what? With two letters. Hetero. Hetero. Let's check the chat box. Capital right. one and a lowercase. That's right. It's going to be an uppercase N and a lowercase N. What is our next steps to decide what type of babies they have? What do we need to do next? We draw draw our, our, yes, draw our Punnett square. Okay, so you draw your Punnett square. It doesn't matter where you place the mommy and the daddy, you can just place them. So I'm gonna put the dominant one on top, my capital N's here. And I'm gonna put my recessive one here with a capital N and a lowercase n. Go ahead and complete your Punnett square on your own. I'm gonna give you 30 seconds to complete yours. And then we'll see if we have the same one. Okay, hopefully you have your box complete and your box looks like mine. I even made little notes so that I can remember that horns are recessive. So if any of my animals have horns, they're gonna need to have these two litters. And if they don't have horns, any animal that doesn't have horns will have this lower, this uppercase two ends or this heterozygous uppercase N, lowercase N, all right? And the question says, what is the chance that the offspring will have horns? So I'm gonna go over to this key that I made to see which one says horns and then see if any of my animals will have horns out of all the animals. Put your answer in the chat pod. What is the ratio of animals having horns to all of the animals? Your denominator or the bottom number of your ratio needs to be the total number of animals in the Punnett square. It's not asking how many will have horns to how many will not have horns. How many will have horns in the whole set? So your bottom number automatically has to be four unless you reduce. Over four. That is correct. There are no animals here with horns. 
this animal is not going to have horns because it is dominant. This animal has dominant genes, will not have horns. This animal has a heterozygous with a dominant end. It will not have horns. And this one will not have horns. So it's zero over four, which is Okay. Okay. I'm going to clear out my screen, see if we got that correct. And it says we're incorrect. Let's see what happens. The cross result in two, oh, you see, I had made the assumption because they did not say that this one was heterozygous. That's very important for us to know. So because they didn't say that this one was heterozygous and they said that the female was, I did dominant ends instead of a heterozygous end. All right, so let's look at that again. They're telling me that the male is also heterozygous. So our Punnett square now is going to look like this. All right, go ahead and do your Punnett square again and see if you come up with a different answer, okay? It was Dr. Hill. Hello. Yes, ma'am. Yes, I had to put the answer. Did you get my answer? I did, but I'm waiting for everybody else to put theirs to give them a chance to reset because we did it incorrectly. Okay. Okay, and I think your answer, how many Please. will have horns? I need you to look at it one more time. How many will have horns, okay? Okay. Let's to see how many will have horns. Those of you who are saying B, that is not correct. We're looking for how many will have okay. horns. Remember, the recessive gene is horns. So that's going to be the lowercase. So the N, N, it would be two. How many N Ns do we have? Because it's two. two. We have two, we only have four kids. This is kid number one, kid number two, kid number three, and kid number four. So how many, out of all the kids, how many kids will have horns? Four. Four kids will have horns? No, it's going to be two. One. One. Both of them, uh, Let's see one. who pulls horns. Remember, this... Capital N is no horns. Capital N, lowercase n, is N's. no horns. Two lowercase n's? A horn. Horns. So how many will have horns again? One. One out of how many in all? Four. 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 Let's answer what? B. B. So let's see if we got it right this time. What? It's still saying. <laughs> It's saying we're wrong. Okay, okay, okay. Look what it says. The cross results in two in. Wait a minute. Let me make sure. We got to go back and read. I'm going to go back. Male farmers prefer cattle without horns because it is safer for their herds. The allele for no horns is in, dominant to the allele for the presence of horns in. A farmer mates a male with horns to a heterozygous female without horns. Oh, a heterozygous female without horns. That's without. Thing, right? A. The answer is A. Okay. It's going to be A. All right, let's see if it is A. That is correct. Woo! Right. And you know why? Mm, because it says a male with horns. <laughs> and the whole time I've been giving him no horns. I've been giving him this dominant when he is supposed to have the recessive. Miss Tammy, thank you for saving the day. All right, that is my bad. That we gotta catch it. I have to catch that. He was supposed to have this lowercase and she is supposed to have this uppercase. All right. 
Uh, it is okay. 5 and class needs to be over. It's only an hour long. Uh, I feel like we still need to do one more, but just for the sake of time, we'll probably come back to this in science. And what I'll do is I'll, um, I will assign the IXL activity and a couple of those to practice, okay, before we come back to Khan Academy. How do we feel about that? Okay. Okay. Right. All right. So be looking for that in your uh, math classes where I'm going to put it for now. It's going to be added to the math class. Um, maybe, no, I'll put it in the social studies class because all of us are in, at least in the social studies class. So I'll put it in there and you should see it at the end of the day. All right. Thank you. Okay. All right. If there's anybody that felt like um, they need to get Khan Academy, like Miss Jamie just asked, I will be sending your invites via uh, Google. You just need to check your email to make sure you're getting those. Okay. Okay. All right. You guys take care and I'll see you next time. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Bye.